Good morning, Steve here in Sydney on the Lane Gnosis website, truebluehealer.com, where in just 20 minutes you can get physical evidence of the divine spark in your self being awakened. It's available to everybody and anybody who can join dots and form a personal opinion. Um, that's a proviso. You've got to have enough brains to join dots and form your own opinion, independent of being told by anybody else. Okay, You've got to be able to follow an evidence trail. Now, the majority of people with common sense, common people can do this, but political extremists can't, okay? People who are angry can't do it either. So that lets in normally intelligent people to do layman's gnosis and get physical evidence in just 20 minutes. You'll have a mentoring voice in uh, several months, most likely, if all goes normally, and uh, you'll get some, um, some fabulous physical signals to clarify for you that you're not imagining any of this and a whole new you is being born in just a few weeks, you will see. So, I'll leave you with that. I'll talk about Europe and Brexit and Australian elections. The victory of the, of the British common people scoring, uh, decapitating their own political parties with, uh, by going against the uh, superior elites, the academic elites, and saying, we don't want any of you people uh, we want someone who can lead us out of the EU. That has echoed around the world, coupled with Donald Trump. It's enlivened him to be more aggressive, although he's still a frightening Zionist, as far as I can tell. But he's got to say that, because if he's not a Zionist, he doesn't even get anywhere near pre-selection. So um, I'm hoping he can be a little bit English, a little bit uh, Anglo, because he's not theoretically a Jew, but he's... He lives with, uh, he's got a Jewish campaign manager, for example. So, and that's how he got his fortune by working with Jews. So, um, I, I hope he's got some humanity left in him and he's not just telling people what they want to hear. But what he's been saying and, and the message of the Brexit common people in England has enlivened Australians to go against the, um, established, um, elites here. We've now, we just had an overnight election and we have a minority government forced upon us by lots of splinter parties being supported, like the Australian Sex Party, that sort of thing, which now controls, it would seem, the upper house. And um, straight-laced investment banker, Prime Minister uh, Malcolm Turnbull, has actually worsened his position by not being able to factor in that if you call an election, there's likely to be a rebellious vote um, against the system um, inspired by Brexit and Donald Trump. So... Worldwide repercussions of that simple little British referendum are still ringing around the world, and uh, it's also going to um, get Austria more more confidence. The common people in Austria will have more confidence also in their uh, rerun of their presidential election, and I hope Mr Hoffer wins. So that's the news for today so far from Australia. It's hard to know where to start with the position we're in today, where we seem to be living in a, in a planet which has been converted into an insane asylum, um, and somehow we have to eke out an existence living in it somehow. Um, it is, I find it quite distressing and tormenting sometimes, because I think, doesn't anyone care for the truth? Doesn't anyone want to know what's really going on? Um, we're also lulled into accepting uh, the many fake metaphors and... and uh, uh, fake beliefs that seem to get us around uh, in our daily lives. We just go along with stuff because we're, we're really too busy living our personal lives in our little, um, what can I say, comfort bubbles, prosperity bubbles. Do get very tired of the left wing people, the, 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 uh, the liberals who really have no principles whatsoever and seem devoted to simply snarling down uh, common average people with um, throwaway one-liners which are never thought out. And this gets the left a reputation for never knowing what they're actually talking about. Uh, and a good example would be, and I hear this many times, I've seen it in videos, um, BBC videos even, that the British people should just shut up and put up with the overwhelming migration that's stressing them so much and forced the Brexit vote, really, it's a major factor. British people should just shut up and put up with it because England's always been a land of mass migration. Well, that is completely wrong. 
Uh, simple primary school history that I learned at school in Australia is simply this, that England was a net exporter of white people to populate its empire in New Zealand, Australia, Canada and America. And um, a lot of people went to India as well. Uh, so England lost a lot of white people to, to diasporize through their empire. That's just the way it went. Um, and all that time, I cannot remember ever reading of a contingent of Maoris from New Zealand um, taking over London. I don't remember reading that anywhere in my history books. Nor American Indians, nor Canadian Indians ever went and occupied Birmingham or Rotherham or anywhere like that. I never heard of such reverse migration. There is no record of it. It didn't bloody happen. So the English, if anything, have been depleted of their own talent by the size, the sheer size of, of their empire. Um, and Douglas Murray can only speak to one single large number migration, which is actually very small. Uh, 50,000 French Huguenots who were persecuted for religious reasons, and um, that was over hundreds of years. So um, it really is not a country of mass migration. It's a net exporter of white people all over the world, which has really spread Western values and Western influence all over the goddamn planet. That's the reality of history, but left-wing people never want to... Uh, uh, actually acquaint themselves with the facts before they do their uh, nasty um, uh, fake one-line put-downs trying to win every debate just by snarling and lying. I've got an article for you. Uh, I'll link below this video. Um, first of all, I'll warn you, it is a controlled opposition site. As far as I can tell, it's, it's uh, highly anti-Semitic, but well worth reading. But you have to take into account... Uh, I'm not sure of the motives of the people who provide this blog, but it provides a very good review of a book written by a Jew who, um, it's described in great detail how the Blair government, Tony Blair never said anything about migration in 1996. But the Zionists that own and operate the Labour Party uh, appointed their own ministers, they told Blair what to do, you know, we're paying you good money, we purchased you, you'll do what we tell you. They appointed a, a Jewish immigration minister who was... Um, first thing she said was, when she stepped into the immigration department in Britain, was, there's too many white faces in this immigration department. Just too many white faces. What the hell's going on here? She wanted to see black faces, non-English faces, in the British immigration department. Um, and she later said, it's quoted in the book, it's a good article to read, um, that uh, her entire political operation was based completely on Judaism, that is, Talmudic Judaism, okay? Her own personal religious agenda was her, um, her whole operation. She had no allegiance to British politicians or the British government at all, and she was going to pursue the uh, Jewish Talmudic agenda that she'd been put there to do. And she started off bringing in five times more migrants um, as they were actually admitting to. So they'd admit to 150,000 uh, migrants coming in, when in fact there were 800 and 900,000 coming in per year. So it's difficult to get real figures because um, the deliberate lying inside the bureaucracy from day one since 1996 when uh, Blair came to power. The name of this blog is uh, The Occidental uh, observer, and it's uh, it's written by some very bright people. Many of them are Englishmen. They're they're a good read, but you have to be cautious about this. And I'll explain uh, why you've got to be careful of information supplied to you over the internet, because almost everything seems to be controlled opposition, and uh, there's considerable value in controlled opposition. I can explain it to you. Um, there is a trick used by therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, etc. And uh, it's called the empathic response. And what you do is a person starts talking, they've come to you with a problem. And um, whatever they say, you never condemn it. You simply echo what they said back to them. So, for example, if they say something like... Um, 
I'm so shy and I don't know what to do. I have difficult, difficulty meeting people in parties, you see. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how I got to this place. And the therapist will say, oh, so you're a little bit shy, are you? And um, you have difficulty meeting people at parties. I see. Mm. The patient will then brighten up a bit and reveal a bit more. Um, sometimes I think it's my size 17 boots. Um, and it could be the fact that I, I never wear a shirt. And that's maybe why I can't hook up with girls at parties. Now, with absolutely no condemnation, absolute acceptance of what is said, the therapist simply says back to that person, so your, 17 boot, your size 17 boots are a factor, are they? Do you think they could be? Well, and uh, not wearing a shirt might hinder your um, social uh, connection making. Uh, that's interesting that you've brought that up. Tell people they're interesting, you see. Uh, by now, the patient wants to tell you more and more, and they end up spilling their guts for half an hour, telling you, it's a good way of getting things out of people and revealing nothing about yourself. And in fact, the empathic response could be done with a computer. You just turn a person's statement around and confirm what they're telling you. So you never condemn anything they say. This is called the empathic response and it's used by uh, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, okay? That empathic response uh, is what all these fake opposition sites are doing, such as David Icke, who tells you some thrilling stories, holds your attention, um, tells you what you want to hear, what you need to hear, that all your, your worries and concerns are shared by someone else and suddenly you feel better that you are not alone. Um, and you're, you're tactfully told that you shouldn't be... Um, um, you shouldn't be uh, thinking ill of Jewish people, and that's part of the therapy that you're getting. So it's actually programming that you're not aware of. So um, what's happening here? Well, you're actually being your your worries and concerns are being salved. You're being told that someone else shares your concerns, your fears and um, your uncertainties about the future, that sort of thing. And someone else is telling you exactly what you think, what you believe, and finally you've got someone who understands your personal problems. Um, and basically they're just mirroring back to you what you want to hear. Now, that's what most controlled opposition sites seem to be doing. They're um, like a honeypot for dissident people who are full of anger full of uh, genuine concerns, I think, and um, you can just palm them off by telling them what they want to hear using this empathic response. So every day at all these sites, you have um, people at the honeypot hearing the words they want to hear. Um, and David Icke's always telling you, in the middle of all these thrilling stories, to not, don't you dare do anything, because if you do something... That's what they want you to do. Then they will strike. Okay? So you're being programmed while you're in a very receptive state and you want to believe everything you've been told. But uh, David Icke certainly fits the bill as a um, controlled opposition site. Okay? And there's lots and lots of these. I'm trying to find a, a genuine opposition site that's not actually uh, Jewish controlled, Jewish operated, Jewish owned. For example, there's one called Bare Naked Islam, and um, it furiously condemns everything Muslim going on. And if a window, the coverage of the internet is now phenomenal. If a window is broken on a cathedral in Sweden, it becomes headlines on internet blogs all over the planet. So much ado, headlines are generated, angry editorials are written about a single window being broken in a Swedish cathedral. Uh, whether it's broken by a Muslim or not doesn't matter. The idea is planted in your head because it's an anti-Muslim blog. and So that's telling you what you want to hear. Now, I was watching this news coming in for a few months. It was interesting to read. Um, you get to know a whole lot of petty incidents you wouldn't normally know from mainstream news, such as uh, Muslim shoplifters caught in shops, that sort of thing, refusing to pay. But you also get that from other people anyway. So, um, And one day I made a mistake. One little mistake, because I noticed that they never said a single thing about Jewish people, and it was this. I simply made a joke about the whole hoax. 
and I was instantly blocked with no no appeal, no question, or, you know, could, would you like to retract that statement? None of that. I just got, you're out of here. That's it. You're finished. So, and later on, this person actually confessed in one column that um, she's Jewish and she won't hear one wrong word said about Jewish people who are actually behind the Muslim migration uh, if you read this book from Occidental uh, Observer, which is a book review and quite detailed description of how Zionists basically put their own um, Jew Jewish politicians in under the Blair government and destroyed England with migration, destroyed London, for example. So, um, and uh, this um, bare naked Islam, I'll give you a link to it, um, won't hear a word of this, you see, because it's, it's anti-Semitic. Can you believe that? Sometimes the truth is what it is. That's the way it is. And you have to stop putting all these silly slanderous titles on it, these slanderous adjectives. So I'm very happy that Brexit and uh, um, Donald Trump have actually affected Australian elections. That just shows how powerful Brexit was, a breakout by one bunch of people in the English-speaking world, one bunch of common people who just had it up to here with the so-called academic elite uh, who really um, can't produce a leader to lead Britain where, where it wants to go, where it's been clearly indicated. So doesn't that tell you so much about the goddamned elites all around the Western world? Um, you're probably mildly suspicious, you might think, that I'm controlled opposition too, that I may have, uh, say, somebody with a clipboard called Mordecai feeding lines to me, a teleprompter, that sort of thing, and I'm really a front for some uh, Jewish institute. I promise you I am not. There's no one else in the room with me as I speak right now. I'm not like Alex Jones with a string of producers behind the cameras. And um, I've got DNA evidence to prove I'm definitely not Jewish, okay? So I've, I've had my DNA analysed in uh, the year 2000 and I discovered that I had um, genes going back proven to be either um, uh, English Vikings on the east coast of England or Bronze Age Ireland, okay? That's my heritage. That's where I come from. Even my name is Irish, you see. So I can promise you, scouts on it, I am definitely not Jewish. So I'll try and stay within cooey of the truth. Is that okay with you? I try to tell you what I know as accurately as possible. Okay, I'm not. I try not to spin doctor things. Okay. DNA reminds me of the uh, the recent new policy of Israel to DNA test everybody who wants to go and live there to make sure they're racially pure. Um, how could people live in a post Brexit world? where you still got Jewish stranglehold hold over British politics and British society. Well, there's one possibility that might work. You can have a party that bases all its immigration policy for England on Israel. Very simple thing to do. Just say, we're going to emulate Israel. Whatever they do, we're going to do it for England. Um, and you can say, yes, of course, we're all pro-Zionist. Yeah, we all believe in Israel. Yeah, we all love Israel. Yeah, right. And we're going to copy their immigration policy to the letter. So we only let people in of our choosing um, and because uh, we have to maintain good British stock just like the Israelis do uh, maintain their good Jewish stock, you see. That might be a way of surviving in a Zionist-controlled world for a while. But ultimately what the, the post-Brexit British governments have to do is pull out of the United Nations to get out from under all the, uh, the human rights agreements uh, and rewrite them locally for Britain only and to hell with everybody else. Relocalisation seems to be the answer to globalisation and it's all been triggered by this one amazing Brexit event. Um, for example, the UNHCR, where they're always saying each country should take in so many refugees all around the world, boat people coming from God knows where, poor people running on the run from civil wars in some unknown place. Um, UNHCR was invented uh, for the return of displaced people during World War II in 1945, the millions of people not, no longer in their natural homelands, they were displaced. And the UNHCR uh, rules about accepting refugees was made for that scenario post-World War II. But today it's being used to try and um, 
manage the problem of economic migration from uh, the uh, the most unproductive nations to the most productive, from the dumbest nations who can't work their way out of poverty to the brightest nations who have built civilization, and that's not a good mix. And it's all done by Jewish lobby groups, I am sad to say. Um, if you want to know what your future is for your grandchildren, they'll be born into a, a concentration camp. Um, the allocated space in Agenda 30, that's UN, United Nations Agenda 30, the allocated space for your grandchildren is an area 10 feet by 30 feet. And you'll be living in a caged city where you are caged in and um, the rest of the country is um, left open for megafauna to graze. Um, the people who wrote up Agenda 30 are Talmudic Jews and they believe that you should be fenced away to give animals a chance, finally, because you're worth less than animals. It says so in the Talmud, okay? Non-Jewish people are worth less than cockroaches and at best they can only be squashed. That's written in the Talmud over and over again. And it reads like um, um, juvenile toilet wall hate scribble at best. And amazingly, the Jewish community revere it as a holy book. Goodness gracious, what a sorry world we live in, isn't it? Everybody laughed at George Bush when he talked about unsigning treaties that America was locked into through the United Nations. Um, I, sus I suspect England could do just that and start again uh, and stop this pernicious influence of lobby groups um, signing us up to trade agreements, buying politicians to, um, to sign agreements in, at midnight and, and ram things through the holidays of parliamentary time when most parliamentarians are away. That's how 1913 happened. It was about four days before Christmas when the 1913 American Federal Reserve was uh, enacted with most of the parliament being absent. So it was put through by a few zealots, you see, and America has regretted this ever since. Thus, post-Brexit governments uh, have to be very brave. There's going to be a lot of torpedoes fired at them by lobby groups, etc. And I really don't know how you stop, say, a Workers' Party, party getting up, uh, preoccupied with Brexit, getting it out of the UN as quick as possible, out of the uh, EU as quickly as possible, etc. And I don't know how you stop name-changing Jews from infiltrating your party and wrecking it. I don't know how you do that because there's a history of that happening. Um, that's a major problem. See, Jeremy Corbyn said the British Labour Party is really the product of Jewish lobbyists. It's owned and operated by them. And they just put, um, for the last hundred years, they put Englishmen out the front in bowler hats and umbrellas as window dressing, so you think it's an English political party. But really, it's all about Judaism and what's best for Jews that determines their policies, which, you, which is why you often have all kinds of moral cross-ups going on, because uh, it's entirely a Jewish policy the British Labour Party has always had. Uh, similarly, the Conservative Party. There's BBC um, um, documentaries about this. I could link one. Um, they form... A, um, a club to make the donations and literally large amounts of cash can be handed over in a suitcase and that's legal and they're not required to keep any written records of who they're giving the suitcase of cash to. That's how British politics is run, okay? BBC just made a show about it. I'll, I'll find a link for you. So what do you do with these natural conspirators, this ethnic group that have been thrown out of 103 countries that Douglas Murray will never talk about and David Icke will never talk about um, and all the other opposition sites will never talk about. How do you get to be thrown out of 103 countries? Well, you know, you've really got to work hard to be treated this way by the Romans, the Germans, the French, the British, uh, all, all through history. Um, and even before the Romans, they were mistreated um, because of their own personal behaviours and their behaviours as a group. It was said uh, in 500 BC that they couldn't rule themselves. Uh, they hated each other so much. There was so much robbery and brigandry going on that they asked the Romans to govern them so that they'd have the rule of Roman law, the firmness of Roman law. And um, 
They couldn't even stand that. They, they actually rebelled against the Romans <laughs> um, to, um, to overthrow them after they asked the Romans to come in to rule them because they couldn't rule themselves. So uh, Jews don't get on even with each other, let alone other people, and they haven't changed and they've retained this, um, this uh, anti-society um, tendency through inbreeding for two and a half thousand years, three thousand years. So, what do you do with a group of people like that who have been really, and they're natural conspirators today, and um, they generally put local people like Englishmen in bowler hats and umbrellas uh, out the front so they look like a, a British political party, and they're financed and pulling the strings from behind by Jewish oligarchs. So, what do you do about such a, such a group of people? Well, I certainly think it needs discussion certainly think it needs a discussion and there's not many people actually discuss these situations these problems an obvious answer is they could all go back to to israel that so many millions of people died to make available to them in two world wars but the reason jews don't go back to israel is that they don't get along with other jews in israel they don't really want to be there that's why they left and uh, they actually do better sort of parasitically pulling strings behind natives in other countries. So they are natural conspirators all the time and that's a major problem. It's just the way they operate. Never out in the open. Everything's got to be done secretly because everything's got to be done in a conspiratorial way. So my, my suggestion is post-Brexit England how to navigate the future would be in terms of migration make a, a serious effort to emulate the immigration policy of Israel and keep saying it over and over again and let, let, let everyone scream at you, racist, uh, xenophobe, blah, 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 and you say, we must follow Israel. They're the one true immigration policy. There's nothing, no other way to do things except the Israeli way. You can just keep repeating that back to all the Zionist flunkies, all the, all the bleeding uh, left heart, left wing progressives who've got no principles whatsoever. And uh, how are they going to deal with that? We're going to copy the Israeli immigration scheme um, to the letter and handpick people that we want. Why can't we do that? We're a free nation state, can't we? Uh, that's one way of countering all the Zionist infiltrators in any political party that any uh, Brexit, post-Brexit uh, government is going to be full of. Um, maybe we could use the new idea of crowdfunding via the internet to, to fund parties to keep Zionists out. But I know how easy it is to, uh, to launder money in suitcases and stuff like that under tables at private meetings. It's that damned easy. I mean, they took um, Tommy Robinson, didn't they? They took him out of the EDL by, was it a Jewish um, organisation that took him off the, decapitated the EDL? Were they Jewish people behind that think tank? I suspect they were. So you've got to um, be ready for some casualties along the way. And uh, But I think Britain will do better by itself. And what my suggestion is they simply stop paying their dues to the EU and be thrown out rather than wait for Article uh, 50 and all that stuff. Okay, so Steve here on uh, This Is Monday in Sydney, Australia after our hung parliament thanks to the Brexit vote. And I thank you very much for that. Ta-ta for now.